Anthony Volpe and Jason Dominguez are clearly good, but is it realistic to think that they'll make the opening day roster? You are Locked On Yankees, your daily New York Yankees podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Yankees, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Stacey Gotsoulias. Thank you for making us your first listen every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Ultimate Baseball GM. Ever dreamed of becoming an MLB GM and managing your baseball franchise, then this game is definitely for you. To download the game, just visit ultimategm.com or look it up on the app stores. Our listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo locked on in all caps in the game. Steve, what do we have for everyone today? Let's chat some interesting stuff. Uh, first off, I mean, for a long time, well, maybe not long time, but for regular you, uh, viewers on the YouTube side, you can tell I am in a hotel room. Uh, <laughs> so I'm in Phoenix and uh, I've been going to the World Baseball Classic. So in our last segment today, I'm going to chat a little bit about what that experience has been like. It's been a, an interesting ride following this Team USA. Uh, but first, I wanted to have an honest discussion about Volpe and Dominguez. Um, we'll start with Volpe here in just a second, but to kind of set the precedent. So I wanted to bring up, obviously the title of this is, is are they going to make it? Are they going to make the opening day roster? And I think it starts with essentially these guys have to skip AAA in order that for that to happen. Right. So again, we're going to talk about Volpe first, but Dominguez has not played AAA ball. He's barely played double a ball. Um, they're having really good springs. They're looking really great. I found this article written by Scott Kornberg, who is, Awesome, by the way. One of the best play-by-play voices in minor league baseball. He's the Jacksonville Jumble Shrimp uh, voice. Love that guy. He's like the nicest guy on the planet. Um, but uh, he wrote an article last year about skipping AAA. And he put together an Excel sheet of guys with the highest war over the last decade. that, And to see where they, how many AAA games they played and how many AA games they played. Uh, I'm putting that list on screen now here on our YouTube side. I'll kind of highlight some of this stuff here for our audio folks. Here are some guys that have essentially skipped AAA. And it's interesting that it's typically middle infielders uh, or or infielders, really, kind of like the 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 non-first baseman, non-catchers, really. Um, so Manny Machado skipped AAA outright. He played 109 AA games, which is, you know, if you're looking for an argument to make Volpe, then that's, you know, the first first one you're going to say. It's like, oh, well, he, he could play middle infield. Um, Anthony Rendon only played three. He only played 54 games at double A, which is really interesting. Um, and then the other obvious one on this list is Jose Altuve essentially completely script skipped triple A ball by only playing five games and only 35 at double A. So it's not unprecedented. Um, it wouldn't be the first time Christian Yelich only played two games, 49 at double A, uh, Brian McCann completely skipped triple A. Jason Hayward played only three games at triple A. And this is excluding by the way, any rehab appearances. This list Mm. completely excludes rehab appearances. Um, So it is interesting to see that it happens. It's like best case scenario. Always. It's always the best players. Um, And it's easy to look back at these names and go, well, yeah, I would probably skip triple a if I were Jose Altuve too, you know, like that makes sense, (laughs) but it's hard to look into the crystal ball and say, well, Anthony Volpe is the next Jose Altuve. Right. right. That's that's a hard thing to say. I don't care how good of scouting you've done. Uh, it, it's you never know. You, no one knows. Uh, we're all just making our best guesses. So I wanted to start with that, Stacey, and then now lead into our conversation. Can Anthony Volpe essentially in this case be the next Jose Altuve? <laughs> I mean, can he? Sure. But will he? <laughs> you know, I think that's the question. Um, I'm actually, you know, looking at these numbers, I'm actually shocked the most, I think, by Brian McCann completely skipping AAA. I didn't realize that he was that he was on that fast of a track into Major League Baseball. Um, but I don't see that happening with Volpe. Um, it's good to see the kids doing what they're doing in spring training because this was their chance to show Yankee fans what they can do. But I feel like some Yankee fans, some Yankee, you know, uh, broadcasters and pundits who write about the Yankees are speeding things up a little too much and making it so the fans believe that this can happen. But realistically, no, 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 
Mm-mm. Uh, we have some numbers for you. Of course, we mentioned Volpe's had a really good spring. And this is kind of like, – he homered again on Sunday. We're recording this on Monday for Tuesday's show, obviously, so we don't know what he did on, on Monday night or yeah. Monday afternoon, rather, recording before. Again, I got to go to the WBC. Uh, <laughs> but I found it interesting. So he had – He's had 25 at bats in spring, which come on, guys, 25 at bats—it's <laughs> absolutely nothing. Uh, eight hits, six runs scored, two bombs, a couple of RBIs, a couple of stolen bases. He's batting 320 uh, on base, 433. Like, yeah, they're good. They're good numbers. There right. are 25 at bats. 25 right. at bats. But I, the interesting part I found here, Stacy, was 25 was the number last year where things flipped backwards for mm. Volpe in Scranton. 11 for his first 25 with the rail riders. That's 440 average in seven games. He went deep twice. He had two doubles. He drove in four and he only struck out five times after that. His last 64 at bats over his last 15 games, he went 10 for 64. He struck out 25 times in 15 games. Hmm. And he, he played a little better over the last like series over the last like four games. He played a little better in that stretch. Yeah. Um, there was a really, really bad stretch in there where he was striking out two, three times a game. Hmm. So, I mean, I know Stacy, you didn't get a chance to watch him like I did last year. I think he's really good. And I, I think he's going to be good. And I just don't think there's any reason to rush him at all. Right. Right. And we've been saying this. We've been telling Yankee fans to kind of temper their expectations and that you will see Volpe eventually. You're just not going to see him right away. And I think it's maybe we should have this part of the discussion here for Yankees fans that maybe aren't necessarily super glued into how prospects work Mm -hmm. um, and how this all shakes out. Like, can we kind of talk about like, why is it this way? Like, why do we essentially have to play this waiting game as fans like this kid's good just put him in like what from your perspective Stacey like why why is that the case in in baseball I mm, I don't know I guess because there aren't a lot of instances like we just went through the list of guys that skipped steps and stuff but it's really rare for that to happen and it's such a one of those you know lightning in a bottle things and the Yankees historically don't like rushing their prospects because they've been bitten in the past when they have. And, you know, you can't expect someone like Jason Dominguez to suddenly become like Ken Griffey Jr. You know, I mean, the kid literally just turned 20 and everyone's talking about wanting him up, which we'll talk about in the second segment. But I just feel like they like being careful with these kids. They don't want to, especially with the Yankees, it's the Yankees. You don't want to thrust these kids into playing in New York when they're not ready yet yeah and it's not just the yankees we should mention like this is baseball yeah and i think the major contributing factor it's you would weirdly enough i'll I'll link that article by the way that i mentioned about skipping triple a if you're interested in reading it um but you would think in your mind like oh position players would skip triple a more or uh pardon me pitching would skip more so than position players because like well if you have the stuff you have the stuff um but I think just general rule of thumb, the biggest hardship always is adjusting to better pitching. Mm -hmm. That is always going to be a problem because of how the structure of the game works. You can be an incredible college hitter, but you're not facing the world's best. Let's be real. The world's best on a daily night, like the number five starter on most major league clubs most middling to contending major league clubs were like the best college starter in base, you know, like uh, in their division when they played, you know, or, or were some of the top high school arms in the country at the time. So it's always going to be that. And they had the chance to elevate their game as they get to the majors. So that from my perspective, that's always the problem is it's always hard to adjust to hitting or to pitching rather as a hitter. Right. And I don't think that's going to change anytime soon, even with how baseball has been restructured. Um, so I, I think for the the fan that doesn't get like, again, who is just upset, like Volpe's playing great. Why isn't he making the club? It's pitching. He's playing great right now, but he's also not facing, you know, he's not facing Tyler Glass now every night. Like these guys are legit, incredible pitchers always. 
And even if they're not the best guy on that team or in that rotation, they are some of the greatest pitchers in the world. It's hard. It is a very, very tough game. Yeah. Our new partner and sponsor of today's episode, the mobile game Ultimate Baseball GM. Ever dreamed of becoming an MLB GM and managing your professional baseball franchise? Well, your dream can come true, and this game is definitely for you. Manage every strategic aspect of your team, play through the season, and lead your team to glory. You're responsible for hiring the right coaches and staff, manage team finances, scouting and drafting players, manage difficult personalities, navigating your franchise through free agency and all the ups and downs of a season. All this in a challenging and realistic game world. Ultimate Baseball GM is completely free and playable offline. Play on the go as you want and when you want. Locked on Yankees listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo locked on in the game store. So make sure to check it out to download the game. Just visit probaseballgm.com, scan the code on our YouTube side, or look it up in the app stores. That's probaseballgm.com. Ultimate baseball GM start your dynasty today. We talked about Anthony Volpe, and now it's time to talk about Jason Dominguez because Yankee fans are just as excited about Dominguez because he's also doing well in spring training and bashing home runs. And, you know, he's not like hitting 20 home runs, but he's he's showing off for the fans. And the thing about Dominguez, which I mentioned in segment one, he is really young and doesn't have even as much as experience as Volpe has. And Yankee fans are thinking to themselves, maybe this guy can replace Aaron Hicks. Hold your horses, everyone. Not yet. <laughs> it's not time yet for Jason Dominguez, just like it isn't time for Anthony Volpe. He only played five games at Somerset, um, 40 games with Hudson Valley, 75 games with Tampa. So he did make the jump to each level, but he really doesn't have enough experience. No, <laughs> no, he he struggled in Tampa. He played real. He, he played his best ball at Hudson Valley. He was essentially he got called up to Somerset at double A. Uh, to make that playoff run with them. Right. Um, once Hudson Valley was was axed from the playoffs last year. So he got added to the roster in Somerset. But he he really struggled in Tampa. Um, and it was kind of interesting to see him get the call to Hudson Valley because I, I, I don't know if it was just like they he needs a change of scenery or whatever because like, he, he was struggling. Like he was not playing his best baseball in Tampa. Um, but I think that move, that gamble essentially kind of worked. Uh, on the Yankees front to get him to Hudson Valley. Um, but Stacey, I think, I think this conversation more boils down into a very, very simple question. Uh, first off, you want these young guys to get at bats. Yeah. That's the most important thing for players of this age is they need to have these at bats. So the simple question here is where in the world would he play right. slash when would he play in the majors? Like right. nowhere. Yeah, basically. And you make a very good point. And, you know, it was, I thought the same thing when they brought up Peraza last season, that it was great. They brought him up, but they were barely playing him. And when you're at that point in your career, you want more regular at bats and sure the experience of being up in the majors is an important one, but you know, you need to get regular reps and, Dominguez would not have that happen if he's called up to the Yankees. He's not going to be starting. There's no way he'd be starting. So he would be maybe the fourth outfielder and you would barely see him. And he needs to get his game going and get better. I mean, he's good, but he can be better. And that's the only way to get better is if you're taking regular reps. Yeah, because we, we detail that with the Bader injury. If you're thinking, well, Bader's off, put on Dominguez. That's not realistic either. Right. Um Right now, you anticipate Judge in center, Hicks in left, and Stanton in right. And yes, I know Hicks didn't have a good year last year, but he is a major league baseball player. He is. And that's how the Yankees view him. That's how the Yankees are paying him. Right. And why would you call up Dominguez, who has played, again, five games at double A? Five. Like, yeah. if we look back at that, uh, that list we had, the lowest number is Altuve, who had 35 AA games. Right. That's right. the lowest on that list. So 
even Jose Altuve, Jose Altuve, a Hall of Famer coming in. Let's be real. Sorry, Yankees fans, but he's a Hall of Famer. 35 games at double A. So you're telling me that Jason Dominguez right now is better than a Hall of Fame Jose Altuve. I'm sorry. I can't even begin to make that argument. Right. And again, it would be different if the Yankees were anticipated to get last place in the AL East. Right. Then I'd be like, okay, maybe. And they didn't have anybody to play center or right or left. Or whatever. <laughs> yeah. But they have Aaron Judge and Giancarlo Stanton. Yeah. So you're going to take a bats away from Giancarlo Stanton to put in Jason Dominguez. Right. Use some logic here. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. And you're, I, I, I hate to say the word wasting an option, like saying wasting, but you're like wasting an option on him. You're, you're wasting quote unquote service time. Like if you care about that kind of thing, yeah. there is no point. There is right. no point. Let him be him. Let him grow. He, he has a lot of aspects of his game. He needs to work on. He needs to be more consistent with the power. Um, he needs to stay in shape. Honestly, he put on some weight last year and he needs to stay in shape so he can keep his speed up. Um, he's still growing a lot. He needs to stretch out and fill out. Like there's a lot of things uh, going on with his body and and just him as a player like I, I think again just where would he play like you think he's gonna get regular at bats he's gonna right. play at least four games a week in the majors yeah. at least come on man that's so extremely unrealistic I don't care how good he is he's gonna be there eventually there's right. just really on a club that doesn't really need an insanely good like, it just doesn't make any sense, man. It just doesn't make any sense. There's no argument to make here. Well, I have one question for you as a member, an actual member of the media, and you did bro you broadcasted games for AAA. What is your feeling of the people who broadcast for the Yankees almost feeding into this craziness? Because it is craziness that, you know, they're like, oh, yeah, Volpe. And I will say, to his credit, David Cohn kind of was trying to temper the fans while... Michael Kay was kind of not hyping them up, but, you know, kind of getting the ball rolling on this thinking. <laughs> and it just, it kind of struck me funny that Cone was kind of like, oh, okay, calm down. Like they're good, but you yeah. have to calm down and not rush yeah. this too much. Cause Cone knows he played. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I saw the Michael Kay thing on his show the other day. Uh, he did, he did bring up the realistic, you know, part of there has to be a 40 man move for Volpe kind of thing. There has to be a 40 man for Jamie Gis. Like, yeah, I get, I get that. Like that, that I think it's important to also always mention that is, you know, that means you have to DFA somebody, right. Or you have to option Cabrera. Like that's essentially it, right? It's like, it's either Cabrera or Peraza will take Dominguez or Volpe will take those spots. It's like, what? Yeah, right. Like, you're and not going to like, what? Like even Peraza is probably not going to make the roster. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I, I think there's one part of it that is, Hey, this is the story of spring. Yes. Okay. Let's talk about that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think the narrative gets fed more because of the online discourse. Yes. Um, more so than, you know, a spring training game at 1 PM on a Wednesday conversation, you know, that I don't think is stoking as much, uh, fan fervor for these guys getting the call. Yeah. Um, but I, th I think it's more just the online discourse that is kind of gone crazy. <laughs> yeah. So either way, Volpe and Dominguez are good. You will see them eventually. It just probably will not be opening day. The NBA playoffs are almost just a month away, and now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first one doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scorers and threes drained. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. So don't miss the chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Yeah. 
So, uh, Steve, you've had kind of a busy weekend. As you mentioned earlier, you're sitting in a hotel room in Phoenix because <laughs> you got to go see Team USA play in two games in the WBC with differing <laughs> results. <Yeah. laughs> differing results, differing experiences. Yeah. I uh, went to USA versus uh, Great Britain on Saturday, and then I went to um, USA Mexico on Sunday. Obviously, you'll know the results of the Monday night game by the time you're watching slash listening to this against Canada. Um, I'll be there or I was there speaking <laughs> in the future tense. Um, yeah. yeah, dude, super different experiences. Last night, again, Sunday night it, against Mexico was wild. Mm. Wild. That I saw your TikTok, yes. <laughs> fully packed. When, when uh, Joey Manessas hit that second homer, which by the way, Good for Joey Manessis. He uh, he's awesome. Uh, we still watched him last year against the rail. He crushed the rail riders last year, by the way, when Rochester oh, <laughs> and has crushed the rail riders and crushed the IL. They took way too long to call him up. He's 31, I believe. Um, ridiculous that nationals did that to him. Anyway, side note, but uh, mm -hmm. that place was, I mean, they have the roof closed to at chase field. Oh, it is it loud. Was loud in there, yeah. man. It was loud. Uh, it was mostly Mexico fans. Oh yeah. Yeah. It looked it like was, it. It was, it felt like like we sat first baseline and had within viewing distance maybe four US fans. <laughs> like it was all Mexico. That place was packed. Clothes are sold out. They sold out of jerseys yesterday. Wow. All jer like they have like the printed jerseys. They don't have the jerseys with the actual letters anymore. So mm -hmm. Chase Field is sold out of jerseys. There are no hats. I got one of like the last U.S. hats. <laughs> like and like I I wanted Mexico stuff, um and I couldn't. I got one Mexico shirt. It was like a generic Mexico shirt. Like I wanted like jerseys, yeah. and they didn't exist. They are everything is gone. Uh, Saturday night was a mess they anticipated fifteen thousand people and they only hired for fifteen thousand and there were forty thousand at the game mm. concessions lines were a mess uh the ac wasn't running very well it was very hot in there oh no um, last night much better sunday night much better against mexico uh but the u.s has played awful they're playing yeah. terrible i don't care that they won against great britain they'd look lifeless yeah they really um, do <laughs> and jeff mcneil over trey turner like what are we doing yeah yeah, Goldschmidt there's... hasn't looked very good. Trout's like done nothing. He has a couple walks and a single. Right. Mookie's flown out to center like 40 times already. Uh, it's weird. It The USA looks very lifeless. They don't have the pitching. And we, yeah, oh, we knew definitely that. not. They don't have the pitching. No. Lance Lynn's going against Canada. Again, if you are watching this, you already know that. Yeah. Uh, see, see how he pitched. But Nick Martinez did not look very good against Mexico. Um, yeah, they just... I don't know. I, I, I don't feel this. It, this could be the first time U.S. doesn't make it out of pool play. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. They really do look lifeless. I was they were talking about Trout and how he didn't play in. Was it 2017 and how he regretted it as soon as he started watching the games? Yeah. And he said, next time I can do this, I want to do it. And then watching him yeah. play, it's kind of like. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's overpowered. He got overpowered by Patrick Sandoval. That slider looked great. I mean, his teammate, Patrick Sandoval. Right. Um yeah I, I, I don't know no no one looks decent i mean tim anderson played well against mexico yes two big hits drove in three uh he was pretty much the only bright spot for usa but yeah they really um, don't have the pitching they have but none that, of the i mean you know no kershaw no cortez i mean th yeah they were going yeah. to have some pitching and now they really they were don't gonna have some but i mean let's be real like kershaw on a pitch limit true how much is that? I mean, that helps, but I mean, I guess that that stops Nick Martinez from being a game two starter, <laughs> right? <laughs> but I mean, and 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 Wayno on a game one starter. I mean, yeah, maybe he probably he may have still against Great Britain. Yeah. Um, but they didn't even play that well against Great Britain. Like no. it was just the Schwarber bomb, really. Yeah. They were losing to Great Britain. They, yeah, they were losing one nothing on a solo shot from Trace Thompson. Yeah, the Great Britain Canada game was the battle of the really horrible jerseys or the really boring jerseys because great yes, britain yes, just has boring. really plain if you terrible. guys haven't seen it yet <laughs> terrible plain font terrible. and then canada whoever designed that jersey i think they sized the canada font too small it yeah, just they it, did it looks really bad <laughs> it does it does hmm. 
paint almost, paint bucket tool red click yeah yeah like they it was almost like they didn't know they were playing and thought oh god we have to make jerseys and that's what yeah, they came up with it, just really bad <laughs> yeah yeah um i'll be uh by the way i'm like recording a bunch of stuff and uh if you want to subscribe to my own youtube channel steve granado uh here on youtube and uh i'll be like posting a bunch of stuff about the wbc so it's it's been fun friday uh, saturday night not very fun it was a pretty boring game uh but uh yeah sunday night was was cool that yeah. that was the quintessential wbc experience like yeah. that was it and it was the mexico fans and the place was rocking man after two we're walking out there were like bands and people cheering and chanting and singing like it was awesome it was awesome i was like all right i'm gonna start singing like go mexico <laughs> it's better so yeah. yeah no it's been fun though i i mean again you'll know what happened in the canada game but yeah i gotta figure it out i gotta figure it out now So thank you for joining us today, and thank you for making Locked On Yankees your first listen. For your second listen, check out Locked On Fantasy Baseball with Matt and Dom as they bring you the best fantasy draft strategies every day. Find it wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Stacey Gautzulius, and we'll see you tomorrow.